Welcome back. So a bunch of things going on for the second half of this week. And as you can see here, Zach is uh, preparing another mold. This is the inlet uh, scoop sort of inner lip uh, getting ready to be laid up. And Jeremy has been working uh, closely alongside me, um, getting a bunch of little projects done. So I had him make these little brackets out of some spare uh, carbon fiber angle that we had from a cutoff of another part. And these are to hold the sort of end stops of the rudder cables, or at least the rudder cable sleeves. And we'll have hardware for that uh, coming soon, just these little uh, sleeves that the cable ends go through, as you'll see soon. And Jim's been working hard on uh, getting these frames uh, for the wing fixtures all sorted out. So this is the first one there. Got that all up and together, and in the process of working on the second one, in the background, this one still needs the bracing uh, in this shot. And Jeff and Devin got their ribs bonded in for the other set of ailerons and rudders, or for the other aileron and rudder. As you saw last time, we'd done one side, and now they've done the other side. And you can see there's also strips in there for the hard points of where the hinges attach. And here Jeff is um, laying up the first of the engine cowlings, and this is the upper um, right side, no, yeah, left side cowling, um, and it sort of interfaces there to the uh, trailing edge of the wing. And we're getting close to finishing all the bits and pieces for the rudder pedals, and these were some center brackets that I needed uh, to support um, the center part of the rudder pedals, as you'll see uh, in a little bit. But um, yeah, so basically what they do is they bolt in underneath and al allow the forces when you're pushing on the rudder pedals hard allow those forces to drive right back into the forward bulkhead there because otherwise we get sort of some twisting force in there and where the bell crank is. And here you can see we've test fitted the fixture that supports the wing skin onto the frame that Jim's created and that fits nicely there. I haven't welded anything on there yet. We're going to save that for just when we're ready to actually lay up the wing or at least put the wing together. And as you can see he's got the other one mostly done. And the quarter inch uh, plastic wire conduit that I had ordered arrived, so I had Jeremy just go and uh, quickly put some pieces of that on the other thin area or thin wires um, just to protect them again. That actually stuff is pretty good for protecting up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is good. So engine wiring is uh, looking much nicer than it ever did. So pretty happy about that. As you can see there, he's got all the single runs wrapped nicely there. So that's that job um, pretty much done with respect to the wiring. I just got to add a couple of uh, wiring runs still um, for things on the ECU, but that you'll see those later on. And there's the left and right cowling parts all laid up and under vacuum. So um, there's not actually too many more fuselage parts left to go. I'll try and figure out uh, what's left. Um, and then, you know, we're just off finishing off the wings after that. And Jeremy got the connecting rods there for the rudder pedals um, all put together with the rod ends uh, threaded in there and the locking nuts. And also finished off um, getting the rudder pedals all put together. And uh, we ended up with about eight, just over eight inches of adjustment in there. And I'll actually show you once we've got this all together, I'll show you how, how the adjustment works on these pedals because um, I haven't really had a chance to show it to you right. But uh, yeah, they're looking really good. Super happy how they came out and it's going to be cool to see them all put together and uh, mounted. And here's Devin in the process of laying up the tray that the intake scoop um, sort of resides in. So right now that's sort of inverted if you want to picture how that part looks when it comes out. Flip it over and that basically sits around the top of the engine. There'll be a whole bunch of things cut out of the center of it, obviously, as you'll see later on. Yep, that's a hole in the newly coated exhaust pipe. And what it's for is for this guy. So it's a basically scavenger tube and it actually draws a vacuum there when the engine's running and even more so at higher power settings and that's going to be hooked up to um, the rocker cover to pull all the um, gas and stuff out of the crankcase and as you can see there in the middle there it basically has a little flute in there so it sort of catches the air and provides that vacuum so instead of using that oil air separator this is what the way I'm going to go and you'll see more on that soon and thanks to one of our viewers for suggesting that and I was up at Brits again on Thursday to have him weld up a whole bunch of different little things that I needed. And these are the uh, actuator arms that you'd seen me uh, create the other day in Ben. So he's welding those onto the little um, arms that live inside of the lock uh, mechanism there. So now that I've got those done, I just need to um, finish those with a bit of paint or something. Um, finish them off and then I can actually fully assemble 
the hook locks as well so hook locks all the parts are there um, pin locks all the parts are there so it won't be long and I'll actually be putting those um, door locks in place and creating all the uh, actuating rods and you'll see that uh, coming up soon as well and while I was up there I got the lathe going again and here I'm putting the little groove in those rods that um, hold the seat belt in place on the roof of the aircraft so we can put the little c-clip on the groove there so it won't slide out of the of the bracket and you'll see um, the next time I'll be putting those together but uh, yeah um, super nice having uh, access to Brits not only his lathe but all the other equipment he has in his shop there I only dream of having a shop with half the equipment he has <laughs> so uh, anyway yeah didn't have any troubles doing that and just basically used a, a sort of thin uh, tool there and I think cut off about 40 thou just to make it deep enough for the C-clip. And here Brit's welding on that little extension thing to the exhaust to get that done. So hopefully uh, that'll solve all those problems now with um, you know what comes out of the crankcase there. Um, I wasn't really that happy about you know having the oil collecting there in that breather thing and, and even with that you know there was all kinds of sort of um, you know gases coming out of after that that we're gonna have, gonna have to go somewhere and probably still had a little bit of oil on so this is the right solution I think for our application and that's what it looks like when uh, the master has done some of his handiwork so um, anyway that's that job done and just have to create the um, the, the hose now to connect the two things. While I was up at Brits, Devon got the little um, layups, just a single ply, laid up over the top of those door locks just to sort of neaten them out where that FR4 had been bonded in place. And as you can see, they're all done there and just with it, some peel ply on them. So they just need to have the peel ply taken off once they're all set up and uh, just cleaned up. And then that door can be ready to be sort of be reprimed again, I guess. And as you can see here, um, Jim's got this fixture now sort of set up with this cross brace and we may need to add more bracing later we're just going to see how it plays out but basically this one is just going to stop that thing from wanting to spread apart under its own weight and he's got a couple of bolts in there so we can remove that and there's the other one just ready to go he's also got the bracing ready for that one so pretty much uh, those things are almost done for the week which is good that's what I thought it would take about a week to get everything done and I didn't get to really show you, but here's the winglet fixtures that we did um, in the, showed in the last video. So those, those got done on Monday. Well, the first one wasn't Monday, the second one Tuesday. So they came out nicely as well. And as you can see, they have the profile there of the winglet. And Jeff's keeping a steady supply of molds uh, prepped for laying up. So this is one of the upper skins for the foreplane in primer. And here are those two cowling pieces um, now out of the molds and already trimmed off. So those ones are ready to be test fitted once we get, um, I guess, the fire, firewall, once the firewall is bonded on. Or we'll just test fit again. We can put those on and just see how they're going to fit. Um, but yeah, they came out nicely, like everything actually. And there's the inlet scoop. So that one um, also, you saw that one getting laid up last time. So that one's now been taken out and trimmed as well. And that looks super nice. So pretty happy about that. And there's the inlet tray now being um, released from the mold. Actually, hasn't been trimmed yet, and still actually still sitting in the mold there, so you can't see the other side of it. But anyway, uh, that one's been done, and I'm still trying to think what's left over. Obviously, we've got all the the upper and lower main wing skins, and we've got the wing spars. So um, basically, four wing spars, front and back, left and right, to go, and then everything to do with the four plane. But I don't believe there's anything left to do with um, the fuselage now I think all the parts for that have been laid up and this is the other one of those upper four plane uh, skin molds already had the primer sprayed in there so it's ready and we're just waiting on Mark for the final uh, FEA to get the layup schedule uh, for the four plane stuff before we can do that one and here are those supporting brackets for the rudders and I got them uh, drilled after Brit welded them together and uh, got the little mounting tabs there in place ready to be bonded on with some five minute epoxy and um, then we'll be uh, doing a layup over those so that's kind of what they're going to look like there and they had to have a specific angle because of the angle of that brace and the angle of the forward bulkhead there so um, this is why we sort of did them the way I'm doing them here and this is that uh, bell crank there that's had the allodyne on there that's where that basically lives that you'll see later on when that gets us fully assembled 
and here you can see we've got both of the rudder pedal sort of um, brackets up there in place and gone and bonded those little uh, nut plates there onto the Ford bulkhead so as I said we'll end up pulling the brackets out of place and then just do a layup over all of those little studs there so that's that done and uh, here's the door frame there with the peel ply removed and the guys have done a little bit of work there just sort of trimming off the excess carbon so they're starting to look actually pretty good there now I've just got to redraw the holes through that layup there for the bolts and um, just recut those little slots um, they already have in there it's only one ply of carbon so you can almost see through it from the back side and uh, here Jim's got the second one of those frames together there's the first one leaning up against the wall so that one's done now and as I said we won't be welding them together until we're ready um, or welding the fixtures on until we're ready to actually lay up uh, the wing and there's the intake tray now removed and uh, trimmed so that one came out nicely as well and as I said gonna have to create like a template to figure out all the different places that need to be cut out because the turbos actually stick up through that and onto the redrive redesign uh, Mark's getting pretty close to finishing this now we've actually got some really good photos that were sent over by Earl uh, down there south of Atlanta who's you know uh, aviation engine shop and he sent us some photos of the uh, io520 internals so we can see exactly how they're doing things and you know we're trying to um, do those things as much as possible the same way not reinvent the wheel and so Mark's getting those changes all sort of finalized in here really actually coming together and looking very nice I'm super happy about how this is going to turn out I think because we've just taken the design from the 520 um, this is just going to work out of the box I don't think we're going to have any issues really because it's all been so proven over so many years and we're not really doing anything different than they're doing all the dimensions and the layout and stuff is pretty much the same so uh, fingers crossed that 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 turns out to be the case and uh, Mark still has a little bit more work to do to finish off uh, things here he's just um, got to just finish off the mounting bits there and a few other little um, changes that we made based upon those photos that we got recently and um, here you can see he's upsized the holes there for the bolts um, that are going to apply the pressure on the journal bearings um, that you know keep the shaft in place and he's got these mounting brackets sort of mocked in right now that's kind of what they'll look like and the bolts obviously made up with the existing mounts on the engine frame that we have right now so um, there shouldn't be any um, difficulties in mounting this and it should align perfectly because the other one aligns nicely right now so this one should uh, just basically bolt in place when we get it and it's not really that complicated for the guys at CRI to machine um, this is going to be the two sides of the housing left and right and then the brackets and then these rings and then the shaft um, so not too complicated and there's uh, the oil drain there so there's going to be a fixture on there that'll run back um, to the sump but overall uh, it's looking really nice and um, I'd say probably within a week We'll have that all finished off um, and uh, um, we could probably get it done sooner but it's nice to sort of sit at it and look at it and think about it and say oh what about this and what about that before we send it off to Barry and uh, and get them to mill it so much happier just to be you know really comfortable with the design before we actually spend some money on it and finally this is the intake there with the little lip uh, just sort of set in place and that provides an airfoil so the flow of air coming in there works nicely and obviously it's inverted but this is what it's going to look like on top of the engine just to give you some sort of perspective it's sitting a little bit far back right now but that's probably by about two inches um, but overall that's kind of what it looks like and I think it looks pretty mean um, so anyway and, and along the lines of uh, stuff to do with the engine I have ordered the prop now from MT and as I told you guys that they told me when I was back at Sun and Fun they have a massive um, backlog now so our delivery date I think it's actually the, the date they're going to ship out is only October 18th but that's not going to stop us from getting the aircraft up to the airport and being able to taxi it around and stuff um, with the existing prop on there we just won't be able to fully fly it with the existing prop we need to wait for the new one so that's kind of a schedule now we'll be shooting for uh, anyway that's our update for this week and I uh, hope you enjoyed it and thanks again for watching